Okay, so in this problem, we're told two chords can support a chandelier in the manner shown in figure, except the upper chord makes an angle of 45 degrees with the ceiling. If the chords can sustain a force of 1,660 newtons without breaking, what is the maximum chandelier weight that can be supported? So I went ahead and drew the figure here. So basically, we have these two chords, FA and FB, and they're going to be supporting uh, the weight force of this chandelier here. Right, so this box basically represents our chandelier. We know the max force right, of F A and FB, they can take 1,660 newtons. So you basically say the F max of A and B is 1,660 newtons. And we're trying to figure out the max weight that this chandelier can be uh, without breaking. So the first thing we need to decide right in this problem since we know they both can do uh, 1660 newtons we need to figure out which one is actually going to break first right so we know how much they can support but we need to figure out is fb going to break first or fa right because whatever one breaks first uh, we're going to set that value equal to that one and then use it to solve right because if the other one can withstand it then it's not going to be useless or it's not going to be useful solving for it because it won't be broken at the point at which this is so hopefully that makes sense uh, but the way we're going to do it by figuring out which one breaks first is basically by seeing which force here is greater. Now, because if we can figure out which force is greater, then it'll tell us which one's going to be uh, absorbing more force here, right? Which, which force is bigger, therefore it's going to be taking more of the load, right? If it takes more of the load, it's going to break first, right? Because they can both hold the same amount uh, without breaking. So whichever one is bigger, then that one's going to break first, and that's the one we actually need. So. Uh, the way we do it is I know some of the forces in the x equals zero, right? Because this is a static problem. Therefore, all the forces must uh, equal zero, so it's not moving. And then what we're going to do uh, is add up the forces in the x. Now, when I'm referring to the x, I'm basically talking about this axis here. So what are the forces acting along this? So notice we have uh, the x component, or just FB, right? Because it's along the x. Uh, and then we have the x component of FA. And then the weight force isn't going to have an x component, so we can just ignore that. So notice FB is going to the right, therefore I add it as positive. Uh, FA is going to be going to the left, so it's negative. Uh, but we got to find the x component first, right? So I know it's going to go up like this. This is the y component. And then my x component would point this way. So my x and y. Uh, the way you can solve for it is by using trick. So uh, I know the cosine of an angle, right? They tell us in this case it's 45 degrees here. So I know the cosine of 45, what is cosine equal to? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side of our triangle is the x, right, of our angle. Uh, and then the uh, magnitude, right, the hypotenuse is just fa. Therefore, uh, if I want to solve for x, which is our x component of fa, it's equal to fa cos of 45. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, when we divide, or if I move this to the other side here, I'm going to get FA cosine of 45 equals FB, okay? And then I can divide, right? What we want to do is figure out this ratio. So I'm going to figure out what the cosine of 45 is. Cosine of 45 is 0 0.707. So I have 0 0.707 FA equals FB. So dividing this by both sides, this is going to tell me... Uh, 0.707 is the same as FB over FA. Now, what does this tell me? Well, I know that FB is going to be less than FA, right? Because this is less than one. If this value was greater than one, right, then that means FB would be greater than FA, right? Because you can think about it. If we just set them as random values, uh, 0 0.707 and this would be one, that would give us what, what, uh, what we're looking for. And this tells me FB is smaller. So now that I know FB is smaller, I know the force that this is going to absorb from this weight is actually less. So I know that FA is going to have to basically take on more of the load uh, from this weight. Therefore, uh, FA is going to break first. Now, if FA is going to break first, then we basically are just going to solve it in terms of FA. So the way we're going to look at it is now is I know the sum of the forces in the Y equals zero. And then basically, we're basically going to set FA equal to 1,660. Uh, right? And then uh, we're just going to solve it. Because I know it's going to break, or the, basically the max amount it could take without breaking is this force, right? This is the max. So when FA is this, right at that moment, it can still hold. But if it goes any uh, over that, it's going to break. 
Therefore, the mass we solve at that moment is going to be the ma uh, maximum value uh, of our weight force, right? Um, so yeah, so what I'm going to do is sum the forces in the y. So uh, we obviously have the weight force in the y, right? So I can say minus w, minus indicating it's pointing downwards. That's why uh, it's minus. And then we just add uh, the y component of our, grab, uh, of our fa here. So uh, to find the y component, just like we did here, but we use sine. So you should know the sine of an angle, in this case 45 degrees, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side of our triangle is uh, y, which is our y component, and the hypotenuse is this side right here, fa. Multiplying both sides, you get the y component is fa sine of 45. So let's add the y component here since we're summing the forces in the y, right? And obviously they equal zero uh, since the system isn't moving in the y. Now this tells me that the weight is going to be equal to fa sine of 45. We know the system breaks at a max value of fa, right? Because fa is going to break first. Therefore, we're using it in terms of fa. And it breaks when fa is 1660. So the maximum value, right, of the weight has to be equal to this y component. If it was any greater, it would break since fa breaks at this value. So hopefully that makes sense. Plugging this in here, 1660 multiplied by the sine of 45 degrees gives me 1,173.797. You can round whoever you'd like. So you can say 1,170 newtons, right? This is your weight. So this would be the maximum weight it could support right? Maximum chandelier weight. So 1,170 newtons. If it was any greater than this, it would break, right? Since FA, the max value it could support is 1660. And we know it'll break once this value hits because FA is taking on a bigger load than FB, right? So FA is going to break first since it's obviously taking on a bigger load. It breaks at this. Therefore, we just set FA equal to it and solve. So round it however you like. I'm rounding to 1,170 newtons. Just make sure you do it how your teacher wants you to. Uh, but yeah, so this is going to go ahead and be your answer. Just a quick recap of what we did. Uh, keep in mind, I summed the forces in the X so I could figure out which chord is going to break first, uh, right? And then I got it in terms of FA and FB. I know FB is smaller, therefore FA is going to break first, right? Since it has to take on more of the load. Uh, and then basically just sum the forces in the Y. I know it's going to break when FA is this value. Therefore, that's the max weight you can support, right? So just plugging it in uh, for FA gives me this. And this is the max weight. So hopefully this video makes sense. And uh, yeah, so this is going to go ahead and be your answer. And uh, yeah, hopefully you uh, found this video useful.